Located in Florida's Panhandle on the peninsula right between Santa Rosa Beach and Destin, shouldn't be too hard to guess where the name Sandestin came from. Today, she might well sit right in the middle of everything. But not so long ago, Sandestin felt more like a tropical outpost, an idyllic settlement at the edge of beachy civilization. But the Sandestin as we know it today wasn't always <clears throat> destined to become a world-class residential golf and beach resort. This land was originally purchased to raise crops and livestock. But during World War II, the military requisitioned a large chunk of the property to research buzz bomb missiles that we had captured from the Germans. In fact, some of the very first American military rockets were tested and launched right here out over the Gulf from top secret hidden bunkers, the remnants of which can still be found today, if you know where to look. In the 1950s, the land was sold to the uber wealthy Winthrop Rockefeller, who went on to become the governor of Arkansas, effectively derailing his personal vision to develop this land into a coastal neighborhood. A few years later, a man by the name of Walt Disney almost bought this land for a little idea he was tinkering around with called Disney World. His plans moved forward, albeit just a little further south. In the 1970s, the owners of the Indianapolis Speedway attempted to buy the land to create something they dubbed the Seaside Racetrack. Eventually, though, the land fell back into the hands of developers keen on building a resort community after all. They borrowed the term San from the unincorporated area known as Santa Rosa Beach to the east, and they mashed it together with the word Destin, found slightly to the west. The rest, as they say, is history. My friend and business partner, Joanne Roboto, has traveled to countries all over the globe in search of great golf and even greater fishing. From Bolivia to Russia, to Alaska and the Seychelles, and everywhere in between, Joanne's pretty much cast a line into every pond, river, and sea that she can. And yet, despite a globe of options, she's chosen to call Sandestin her home for over 20 years. I moved here officially in 2000. I actually came for work, believe it or not, and they had an event at Sandestin and never heard of it, had never been into Pensacola. I flew into Pensacola, rented a car, and just started driving down 98, and I crossed the Destin Bridge, and it was honestly life-changing for me. You know, I looked in both directions, you know, what now I know to be Choctahatchee Bay, I didn't know what it was then, and the gulf to the right, and it was one of those days where the water was just absolutely stunning, and I was like, why, why don't I just live here? This is awesome. That weekend I looked at a model home. There was a new development being built in Crystal Lake and uh, I bought it and I bought it with the furniture. And the idea was I was gonna, you know, use it as a second home. And within six months I moved here full time. I've never looked back. It was the best decision I made. It's great that you can live in a community where you can just walk to four different golf courses, yeah, you, know, you know, or tennis or, fishing or the beach. I mean, everything is so readily available here in either biking, golf carting, or uh, walking. I mean, I can go weeks without taking a car out. So, you know, it's, boy, I hate to tell people because it's a little hidden gem when it comes to freshwater fishing. Um, you know, obviously you can access the bay here very easily. Um, we have a great marina right here on property. You know, they take charters out all the time so that's great if you want to redfish and speckle trout and Spanish mackerel all the things that run in the bay you, you have access to but the little hidden gem is you know we have over 64 ponds here that are filled with large largemouth bass you know the perfect sandestin day for me is taking the dog down watching the sun come up then playing 18 holes of golf and then fishing on the ponds that afternoon and maybe catch the sunset but um, it's all right here. You know, that's, that's why it's hard for me to ever think of living anywhere else. Sandestin's first golf course, called the Lynx, was completed in 1974 
along with residential neighborhoods and a hotel on the bay, now known as Bayside at Sandestin. In the early 80s, the marina, Baytown golf course, and a beachside high-rise were completed. Soon after, the Beach Boys performed right out on the sand for some 12,000 lucky attendees. The 1990s brought about immense growth, with the completion of on-property restaurants like the popular Marina Bar and Grill, home to Marianne the Macaw, and a professional tennis club, more distinct neighborhoods, and the prestigious Burnt Pine Golf Course. A private Burnt Pine gated community soon followed, all named after a forest fire that had singed a portion of these woods a few years prior. The village of Baytown Wharf came onto the scene and now effectively serves as Sandestin's town center, filled with festive restaurants, shops, activities, and daily events. Today, Sandestin is home to 70 distinct neighborhoods rolling across some 2,400 acres between Choctahatchee Bay and the Gulf of Mexico. It's all interconnected by miles of pedestrian bike and golf cart paths weaving through groves of live oaks, lagoons, fountains, lakes, and meticulously landscaped fairways of four award-winning golf courses. There are thousands of vacation rentals throughout the resort, which welcome families throughout the year. The resort's new signature hotel, named after owner Thomas Becknell's grandmother, Hotel Effie, is said to exemplify all the charm and personality of its beloved namesake. Once you get here, I mean, the, the, the kind of nuts and bolts of the hotel, it's 250 rooms with 13 suites. We have a full service luxury spa uh, with 10 treatment rooms. We have an amazing three meal restaurant called Ovid. And some people don't know this, but Ovid is the husband of Effie. The menu is curated by Chef uh, Hugh Atchison out of Atlanta. And it's really just an amazing experience and the feedback that we get from all the guests that dine there is um, second to none. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, our, our, our rooftop pool and bar, which is, we always say, quote unquote, the place to be. So whether you're getting out there first thing in the morning or watching the beautiful sunset at night, it is absolutely gorgeous. All of that. And oh, did I mention there's a beach? That's right. After all these years, the Beach Boys are still here, performing every single day, setting up beach chairs and umbrellas for the countless fans who flock to watch this stunner of a show. True, this is no Disney World, and it's no seaside racetrack. But you know what? That's perfectly fine with us. <laughs>